Hello and welcome back. We've got model number RO58. It's the late 70s version of the Ginty, a completely retooled model over the earlier 50s model from Triang. Pretty, pretty looking thing. And uh, it's not in too bad a shape, this one. It has some problems, there's a few marks on it and the, it did have vacuum pipes, which had sadly been snapped off. Now, we're just gonna uh, put this set of coaches back on the middle line at the station. So we're just gonna move the whole rake beyond point 11. Nice and smoothly. Electra sitting there on the right. And then we'll switch points number 11 and number 12 and roll smoothly back into the station. Now a red LMS version of this model was released at the same time, which was catalogue number RO52. Nice and smoothly through there. Now we are going to pick up that uh, blue and grey parcels van in a moment and, and connect it up with the uh, maroon coaches. Nice stop there. Now I'm going to uncouple the Ginty off camera just to save time. Out through the point work there and a nice gentle stop and we'll switch points 13. And we'll roll back and get that blue and grey parcels. Nice gentle coupling there out through the points. She's doing quite well with all of this point work, I think. And then we're going to switch 12. Roll her up to the maroon coaches. So here's my uh, battered copy of the uh, 78 catalogue. You can see it's sort of gone around the staples. I think that the paper on the cover is far too thin to support the weight of the many, many pages in this catalogue. So we'll just open it to page 37. We can see the, the black jinty there, new in 78, and uh, comes along with the, uh, the nice uh, maroon one that we saw on the cover there. So they were released together. I think that's quite a nice thing. So these replaced the earlier jinty, which had been around since uh, 1953 and ran till 76. So there was a, a little bit of a gap where, where there was no jinty available, but uh, great pictures. I think uh, this catalogue is really is full of great pictures. Um, they must have spent a great deal of time with it, but I think we should uh, probably look through the catalogue in a little more detail on another day, perhaps. So we'll just pop that uh, down for a second, and we'll we'll have a look at the the, the box the black jinty came in. So it's got a nice window box there, so that card could be removed to display it in the shop, perhaps. And again, that fine illustration that followed through in the catalogue. The box has got a little bit of wear and tear, but uh, nothing too bad. And now we've got the, the model number, RO58, BR, 060T, Jinty Loco. Great uh, sticky label on there with the, the effect of screws on, on the side there. I think that's quite, quite nice. Sort of quite a reassuring feel about it when you see it. So we'll see if, just see if we can uh, ease it out of the packaging and have a look at it in the uh, the uh, white polystyrene. Let's uh, bring that out and we've got some instructions. The instructions are, are sadly a little damaged, but uh, nothing too bad. We'll just uh, pop that down and there's a piece of tape on here that seems to say Pico on it. Here we have RO58, 23rd of the 10th, 78. So we'll just have a swift look at that and see how it's been torn in the past. Yeah, it's a very similar sheet to ones we've seen in the past there. So great illustrations, tells you how to take all the uh, relevant models apart. It was a very general sheet. Let's have a look at that piece of tape there. Maybe the original supplier had the, the, the packaging taped up with that. So we'll just fold that up, pop that to one side. And we'll have a look at the model. I think originally the uh, vacuum pipes would have come as a separate part, would have been in here, but uh, they, were, they were mainly broken away. If you have a look at the uh, insert picture there, you can see what they looked like when I got it. Sadly, there is glue marks on the, on the side of the tank where somebody's uh, done, picked it up and uh, got glue on it, possibly when the vacuum pipes were fitted, but uh, never mind, it's a, it's a fairly nice model. So we'll just see if we can ease it out of the packaging there. There we go, it runs reasonably well. It was a little bit hesitant when I uh, first got it. If you have a look at that sort of insert there, you can see. So we'll just 
turn that around and have a look over the model. Lovely shiny connection rod there. You can see that glue mark is quite severe right through. So I think these came along 78 as we've seen and uh, they were produced through into 79. And then uh, in 1980, the model got a paint finish and a, and a different running number. And uh, I think that ran till uh, 82. And then uh, it vanished and then it came back again as, um, oh, I think the, uh, the, the, the catalog number went to R302 in uh, 1980 with a, a slightly different uh, running number and the, the paint finish. And uh, then in uh, 1988, it came back again as um, R053 um, with, a, with a different chassis, I believe, which I, d I don't know much about the, the different chassis. Obviously, this is a completely different chassis to the earlier one that came along in the 50s. But um, I believe that it was a, a slightly different arrangement and motor arrangement, perhaps with the chassis. But uh, let's just have a look around that. You see, we've got the, all the separately fitted detail here. Ooh, let's get some focus back in there. Quite pretty, isn't it? That handrail on the other side. There's a slight bend in the whistle. Let's have a look at there. If we can see that. I don't sort of bend that back. I, I fear it would uh, probably just snap off in my uh, in my hand or whatever I was trying to bend it with. It's very, very, looks very fragile. Again, that glue mark on the tank there. What we can't really see is the uh, the in the, the cab detail there is a little cab detail in there Let me just turn it around nice cold bunker now you can see just on the on the buffer beam there the evidence of where the, the snapped off um vacuum pipe was so it snapped off to a degree where i thought i should just knife it off and then so sort of try and hide it with a little buffer beam red paint there's a lovely windows on the back there with bars on them and they're, they're glazed as well I think, that, I think that really is quite terrific I'll see if I can uh, get an insert picture with the uh, the uh, cab detail there but uh, I can't really I can't really view it through the side there but lovely handrails down the side of the uh, aperture there it really is quite a pretty thing isn't it let's just have a, a closer look at the the front end there and then you can see how and a similar thing with the, where the vacuum pipe used to be there. I've just uh, knifed it off and uh, filled it in with a, a little red paint. So a, a swift look on the underside. The wheels were terribly dirty when I got the model, which contributed to its uh, poor running to start with. And the clip, which goes around the front of the motor where the uh, armature comes through, had separated. So I'm not sure whether the armature was actually running square through the motor housing. But uh, that all fixed quite nicely, and it runs runs fairly well. So fairly smooth running. We'll just have a, a, a slightly closer look at that. So that motor's done hardly any work. And if you look at those brushes, they look to be uh, new. I think they're, they're very large. There's lot, lots of wear left on those. So uh, plenty of life left in these models. One of the things about these models I don't like, or the, this model I uh, don't like so far is the, these clips to get the body on and off, I bet. Many of these were broken, simply trying to remove the chassis from the bodywork. It uh, seems, I know it's a simplified thing and you won't lose the screw taking them apart, but it's very harsh and it's uh, not an easy, easy maneuver. I, I don't like it. I think uh, it could have been responsible for a number of uh, models, uh, premature ending life. So it does have the magnet adhesion, but uh, a bit like the, uh, the B12 we saw a few weeks ago, it doesn't quite have the uh, the pulling power you might think. It, it has some effect, but it pulls really nicely on the level. And uh, that underside is unusual as well. I don't know whether 
somebody has replaced the screws. I've got two um, crosshead screws and, and two flathead screws holding the bottom plate on. And we've got these lovely um, pickups. These uh, wipers just slot down into the plastic part of the chassis. So there's a plastic part and then a metal part. And those four screws hold the whole thing together and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I'll get the words out in a second. That D for the coupling hook there, or the, the D shape, not the hook, is all part of the uh, the chassis molding, uh, the, the bottom plate of the chassis molding. I think that's that's quite smart, but uh, fairly pretty thing. Beautiful looking motor, plenty of life, as I've said, left in that one. A little bit of white grease there, and you can see that clip there. I think I showed the picture earlier. I'll show it again in the. You can have a look at that clip on, on the front of the motor there. Was uh, dislodged, so I think uh, it uh, caused some of the, the, the early running problems I had with it. Well, the, the early test with it, it was soon put right. It seemed to smooth the whole thing out quite nicely, as well as cleaning those uh, terrifically dirty wheels when I got it. If you have a look again at, at the insert picture there, we got all that sort of uh, detail there on that. Uh, plastic chassis, just to see it behind the, the connection rod there. So I think it uh, really is quite a thing, really. We'll just pop that down. They were really trying very hard with it. So if we just have a look at the uh, the service sheet for a moment, we can see those uh, lovely wipers there I was just pointing at. And they slot down into these parts of the, this plastic chassis the bottom plate, which just screws on. And, uh, if you look closely, I'm not going to dismantle the model chili, but it does have separate bearings, so it doesn't uh, use the chassis as a bearing. It has these sort of brass alloy type uh, bearings, uh, which really smooths out the running. There's the, that traction magnet there, and it does have the uh, the uh, plated uh, tires, steel tires on them. So it really is, it really is quite smooth running when 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 you get it all cleaned up. But uh, interesting, I was mentioning the um, the vacuum pipes there, and uh, it says here vacuum pipes may be fitted into the small square holes in the, the front and rear buffer beams. Use a blob of polystyrene cement to fix them in position, and then in brackets here, these items are not supplied with the locomotive. So I thought they would have been supplied in the packaging, but apparently not. And there's that uh, terrible manoeuvre there putting a screwdriver in and levering off the uh, the bodywork. I don't like that at all. I'm not keen on that. So we'll pop that down and just have a, a swift look over the, the bodywork. And uh, we've seen it quite nicely on the outside and the, the nice glue marks on either side. And uh, let's just have a look on the inside. So the, the cab detail is in that unit, which is uh, separately fitted there. Oh, that's quite interesting. It's got plastic, plastic buffers, and they just they just pushed in. And then we've got some uh, writing on it here. Have I got this the right way up? No, not the right way up. We'll turn it the other way around. See if we can get that in focus. And we've got Made in Great Britain, and then we've got the RO52, which I believe is the uh, the catalogue number for the, uh, the the LMS red one, isn't it? The uh, RO52, yes, I was just looking at some notes there. RO52 is the one for the for the, uh, for the the red one. And uh, the original model back in the, the 50s was uh, R52, of course. Um, what else did we have written on there? Uh, we've got uh, Hornby down there. So quite a lot of work being done on this bodywork, I think, to update the model. Quite pretty, we must get the, uh, the red one or the maroon one to go with it, have them both running together one day. We'll just leave that uh, parcels coach there and we'll move off through the point work here and go and collect some goods wagons from the sidings. Great shot of the back of the engine shed there. And we'll roll up to those signals and we'll uh, wait for them to change when the, when the points switch. There we go and we'll roll in and pick up that uh, short rake of late 70s goods wagons. I think we have those. 
uh, back out through the point work. All these wheels on the wagons making a, a lovely noise through the points there. Got that uh, United Dairies wagon, Smith snacks in the bird's eye. We'll just snap those points shut. I think that green wagon's an AW Day. Nice little wagon that, and the Bolsover and a Texaco tank wagon, very bright that. And it's all finished off with a any brake van there. Very bright white roof, isn't it? And that lovely growl from the motor as she comes past the station with a great view of those coaches. They are quite great things, the Triang coaches. Lots of variety over the years, just, just like the wagons. All sorts of colours and shapes and sizes. Lovely shot coming back through points one there. Lovely sound. Now, I think that's probably it for this week. I'm going to leave you with a few shots of some of these earlier Gintus. So this is one from the uh, early to mid-50s. It's in acetate, so it's quite early on. It's got a screw down the chimney, so it makes a, a proper toy train if it's got a screw down the chimney. Lovely, shiny black. There is some warping on that bodywork, but uh, a very pretty model. Sitting next to it is one perhaps from the uh, early-ish 60s. Let's have a look down the other side of it. Uh, she does have a smoke unit, it does smoke quite well, it's the, the Sooth type, although you do have to obviously run it quite rapidly. And it's uh, a very pretty thing, it does have solid metal wheels, this one. So the one sitting next to it's got uh, see-through wheels with steel tyres and a magnet adhesion. Let's just have a look down the side. And notice the uh, the acetate one doesn't have the, uh, the brass safety valves either. But a very pretty logo on, on the side of all of these, but that great big big one on this uh, um, early 60s one with the solid wheels there. If you look at the, uh, the late 60s one, it's got a, a much smaller logo on it, the one sitting on the right there. And uh, we've got uh, the buffers, the buffer shank is sort of molded into the beam on the late 60s one. Looking at the uh, early 60s one, you've got the, the uh, metal push-in buffers with the, the shank as part of it, the, the push into the molding must have been changed at some point, but they're all quite tidy. I think there's a, a tiny bit of damage on this late 60s one. One of the steps has been re-glued in. So let's have a look at that. I, don't, I can't remember which step it is, but uh, it's in fairly tidy condition. And then alongside, there's the one we've been looking at today. Late 70s re retooled model from Hornby Railways. Very pretty, you can see the link between the two models, can't you? Let's just have a look from above. Very hard to get any light on these sort of all black models, so they eat up the light. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed seeing that today, a little bit of running. Look at the models, look at this group together. But as I say, I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. And if you look back again next time, We'll have something else from the, the range to have a look at. Goodbye now.